right, fighthype.com. Sean Patel here with one of the best young fighters, one of the best prospects, you could say, in all of boxing, all divisions, Joey Spencer. What's Joey, up, what's up? Joey, what's going on? Not much. Just chilling. Just got done training. Uh, had a long day of training today, and we're just kicking it. Well, yeah, this is this is a fight hype first. You know, we're going to try this Skype thing. You know, Joey's training over in uh, Linden, Michigan, right, Joey? Yeah, Linden, yeah. Michigan. Yeah, that's where I grew up. Right. So, yeah, we're doing this uh, from from Linden to Vegas. So. Yeah. Yeah. But man, we got we got some some uh, news we want to announce with you. I'm sure later on, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But, some fight news. Yeah. Yeah, Joey's got some fight news he wants to announce. But but first we got uh we want to get his thoughts on the big fight over the weekend in Dallas. Uh, Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia. Errol. Yeah, sure. A lot of people seemed really taken away with uh, what Errol did in there. What did you think about the fight? Um, for me, it was just kind of as expected, um, except for the fact that it went to distance. In my mind, um, I wasn't necessarily shocked that it went to distance, but at the same time, if I had to, if I was going to bet money on how the fight ended, I was thinking like nine or ten round uh, stoppage is what my initial thoughts were. I didn't really come out and say that because I didn't want to, count out a man's heart on the on the level of Mike Garcia and I knew he was going to come in there not to lay down and if anything he'd want to finish at least you know but there was a few different ways I could see it going whether it would just be an accumulation of punches or maybe a body shot like a well-placed body shot um, that I felt like Mikey was going to have no choice but to take and he did he took a lot of them and he took them took them well as far not you know as well as you can take them and still stay in the fight um, but Errol did show a lot of people that were kind of just sleeping on him. You know, it was just one of those situations where Errol proved a lot of doubters wrong, which is a, which is weird being the fact that it was a lightweight coming up to welterweight that he had to prove people wrong. You know, it's like, well, at the last hurt. second, you know, at first it seemed everybody had Spence winning, but then once yes. fight week got close, a lot of, a lot of guys that really know boxing, even uh boxing exactly. stripes picked Mikey to win the fight. Exactly. And it was just really disrespectful. Um, in my mind, it was two equally talented fighters coming together and one just happened to be two weight classes bigger and it was probably going to show in the fight. But a lot of people were acting as if Errol was just some dummy and it was just going to be, you know, a lopsided skill. Uh, on the skill side, it was going to be lopsided as far as the edge going to Mikey Garcia. And I just didn't see it. But as many people as like you said, a lot of reputable people and reputable sources saying that they thought Mikey was going to win. It was starting to make me feel like, man, am I not seeing something? It's like, could I be wrong? Uh, and it ended up going just as, as I expected. And a lot of people expected, like you said, at the beginning, before people's opinions started to kind of change. I feel like a lot of people's opinions started to change like-minded when they saw other people, not that mine changed, but you started to have second thoughts when other people were so strong for Mikey, even legends like Ray Leonard and you know, you saw a lot of big boxing channels and people and celebrities saying they gave that to Mikey, Mikey, and it was just really a shocker to me. But uh, all in all, it was a good night for boxing and a great night for Errol Spence. You know, did was did you think uh, the fight was like in the first round? Errol came out and he threw about yeah. four or five jabs out of the southpaw stance, and it yeah. and it looked like right away Mikey knew he was up against it just from that. Did you see that, too? And do you think Mikey felt that right from the get-go? Man, this guy's even better than what I thought, actually. I think so. Maybe right from the get-go. But at the same time, I think his hope was lost after about three rounds. I think is when his hope was, like, starting to... Maybe after four rounds or five rounds. I'd have to re... I've only watched it once. I haven't rewatched it yet. But after four or five rounds, I think, is when he realized, I'm just going to try to get to go to distance. And... um you got to applaud him for that. I mean, you get in there and you got nothing you can do. Not that he was just trying to get the distance, but there comes to a point where um, getting the distance is all you can do. And a lot of men would have given up in that situation. So you got to, mm -hmm. not that um, I'm going to give Errol all his credit. I'm not going to say like, because some people are going too far the other way saying Mikey's the real winner because he went to distance. No, that's not true. You lost. I mean, there's a loser and there's a winner and you lost and you talk to not, um, faulting him for this, but you talked as if, you know, you were going to beat Errol, you lost, and he's taking, as far as he goes, he's taking his responsibility for his loss. You know, I'm not saying he's not, but a lot of the fans are saying, 
uh, uh, Mikey's a real winner because he went the distance. But at the end of the day, this is, you know, boxing and there's a winner and there's a loser and it's a competitive sport. You don't get points for going the distance in my book. So, well, I mean, there was, there was people who thought Arrow looked so good that even if there wasn't a size advantage that he, he may have won the fight, you know, handily yeah. from what they I, saw. I, honestly, I think that man to man, uh, it would have been a better fight, obviously, just if he had, if they were high level and, you know, whatever. But I just think at Length, athlete to athlete, um, one on one, no matter if they were the same exact weight class, I think Arrow would have edged it that night. But I mean, the like, it, it, did did you know Arrow was that great? Because I I I I think uh, a lot of us knew he was really good, but yeah, uh, yeah. but I mean, man, he he kind of cemented top five pound for pound status. Um, he usually gets touched. I mean, he usually he he's been dominant, but he gets touched in his fights. He barely even got touched. By, by yeah. whatever Mikey threw back. And I mean, you know what? I had a thought on that, honestly. Um, when we were, it kind of surprised me that Arrow didn't come out just swinging. You know, not a lot happened in the first round except for that series of jabs we were talking about at the very beginning. Not a lot happened. And the first thing that me and my dad were talking about when we were just kind of discussing the fight together after the first round, I was like, if I was Arrow, I would have came out um, just walking through him in that first round. Even if I had planned to maybe settle down in the second, third, and fourth round and start to just box. But being that Mikey has all this pressure in his mind as far as what everybody is saying this guy is, I'd want to go out there and prove exactly what – that it is exactly what everyone's saying it is. It's not – it's no myth, you know. I want to go out there and put doubt in his mind. And I felt like – honestly, my opinion was is Mikey was probably his most confident after the first round because he was probably – um he didn't get smoked in the first round. It wasn't like he caught a huge body shot the first round. He got right through the first round, went into the second. But then me and my dad were talking about it, and I feel like Arrow probably was being even more careful uh, in the fight because of what everybody was saying about him not being able to box. I think it made him tighten up his defense even more. Like, um, people, I think it offended him that people thought that Mikey would outbox him or counter him. So I think it made him even more aware of the shots coming back, saying, I don't want to get hit at all. Because he barely even got hit. You know what right. I mean? And, and like you said, he normally gets touched. I think he was being even more fundamentally sound. And not he didn't even want to take a risk at those beginning beginning rounds. He didn't want to go out there and just, even though he could have walked through anything he got hit with that night. Anything. So I was thinking, if it was me, I've got nothing to worry about on the other side as far as what's coming back to me. I'm just going to go smoke this dude. You could see there was a huge, even more than I figured, advantage for Arrow as far as just power, athleticism, explosiveness. There was nothing. It was like he was fighting a. It was like he was fighting a fifteen-year-old. Like you know what I mean. It was truly just a mismatch physically. But he decided to stay on the outside and almost prove people wrong. So I think that's kind of where his thinking was. Well, you know, and then back to just how good is he? Because I think uh, I'll be honest. Before the fight, as good as Arrow was, I was confident that you know Terence Crawford could beat him. Um, yeah. But now, after what I saw, it's it's pretty obvious. It's it's like a fifty-fifty fight. It's a fight that's it's very hard. hard to pick. Yeah. I so how do you think that fight goes now? How do you do you think? Because is that the best fight in boxing, pound for pound, and who wins that fight? It's definitely the best fight in boxing to be made. I don't care. You know, I'd rather see that. Uh, I'd see that more lucrative of a fight than not lucrative as far as money goes, because this is you know. Heavyweight boxing is definitely going to bring in the most money. But as far as lucrative from a fan standpoint, a boxing fan standpoint, as far as what they can be excited about, the most, you know, special type of matchup, it's Crawford and, and Spence, you know. And what I'm saying is I'm, I'm comparing it to Wilder versus Joshua. You know, I feel like those are the two fights that everybody wants to see, the best matchups in boxing. And I think Crawford and Spence even trumps that one. But like you said, I, I kind of gave Crawford the edge as well. But after mm -hmm. seeing Mikey fight, you kind of think it's hard to say where that fight goes. That's truly a 50-50 fight. I mean, you got advantage. You give – because the advantage you gave to Spence was his size, you know. Uh, but Terrence had the boxing ability. And he, it's definitely not as big a, a size difference as him and Mikey, of course. But that was what you gave him. But then now you find out Errol's got even a different type of level to his game. And you think, okay, does that size – is that even that little bit of size? Could that be what – makes it a, a decision in Spence's favor. You know, could that be, you know, the deciding you think, factor? It's that little bit of advantage. Do you against think so against two guys that are so evenly matched? Do you think 
by chance, Bud Crawford was watching the fight at home and saying, oh, man, okay, okay, Errol. This, this, uh, maybe, of course, Air, Air Bud's going to feel like he's going to win every day of the yeah, week. But do you yeah. think he sat there and may have been, oh, I, you're showing me, uh, you know, something even more now. Well, this, this is an it, even it, tougher fight. Yeah. It depends, I think. I think, honestly, from a fighter's standpoint, looking at it through his view, it depends on how humble he is uh, in his in watching. Or he could be discrediting it and saying, oh, I would do this to that part. And I would hit him here. And Mikey should have hit him here. And he didn't. And I would have, you know, exploited this and that in, in this night. You know, he could be uh, dissecting it like that. Or he could be dissecting it like, okay, he's good here. And we didn't realize it. Let's write that down and make sure we, you know what I mean, train for that. Let's make sure that we expect this in the fight let's make sure so there's a couple of different ways you'd be looking at it or maybe a mixture of both you just never know it just depends on you know what type of standpoint he's taking and and you know just to wrap up a little crawford spence breakdown because that's that's a fight i could talk about all day yeah. uh, do, do you think uh because he threw a thousand punches in this fight yeah so is so do you think bud would match those that kind of output or i mean i or would he slow errol enough down to make it to make him think twice, to hes- to make Arrow more hesitant than any any other type of fighter. Honestly, I don't think anybody's gonna slow Spence down because when it comes down to it, he's that type of dog where you saw it in the Brook fight. He didn't get slowed down, and he got countered pretty frequently in those beginning rounds against uh, Brook, but it didn't slow him down. It just it, he just ended up breaking the dude because at the end of the day with Spence, the great quality that he has is if he's getting out box, he will just keep going. You know, just keep going through until he breaks you down to the body. He's going to keep hitting you everywhere he can in the arms until he breaks down the head. So Crawford's going to be forced to match that. And I think he's got it in him to match that. I, I don't see him stopping Crawford. I don't. I think it'll be a decision. Whoever, uh, I think it'll be a chess match and there'll be a lot of swings in the fight. I just think there's no way that fight's it done. You know, there's no way. There's some fights you watch and you're like, man, uh, we thought this was going to be so much better than it was. That fight is going to be, there's going to be a lot of swings in the the action uh, and in the momentum. And I feel like when it comes down to it, it's going to be a, probably a close decision. I mean, that's such a, but yeah, it's just a great fight that I really, that you got to want to see, right? I mean, that the uh, sport every, needs. Every real boxing fan wants to see that one. You know, all, all the, we got we got our problems in boxing, you know, this side, that side. But yeah. you would hope, right, that we could get the best fight in the sport. Gosh, I hope we can get that one. I hope I hope they don't they don't miss that opportunity. Um, I really do. The other thing is, yeah, you also wonder what Mikey does because Mikey and Crawford was a a fight that people have talked about for a long time, right, or for a while at least. And uh, but you would think Mikey and Lomachenko's. Fight, yeah, that's right? probably the move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, but it's me and my dad were also talking about that. I feel like, wouldn't you have loved to see Mikey take that confidence that he took into the Spence fight? Because we were just talking. It's like he truly believed he could win that. And that made him dangerous. That level of confidence made him dangerous in the lower weight classes. So really, where Mikey goes from here, it's going to be really interesting to see if he just keeps con- – if he draws confidence from the fact that he went to distance and he goes down – or does that really – being in there with someone who just he truly couldn't do anything with, does that make him a mentally scarred fighter? Does he have flashbacks to that? Does he wonder if another guy can do that to him, especially someone who's got the boxing skills of Lomachenko? Does he get in there and say, oh, man, what if he neutralizes me? What if he took – it's just you would have liked to see that fight happen when he was full-on Spence-level like confident as far as when he was going into the Spence fight feeling like he was absolutely invincible what could be the difference in his career going forward you know what what's the we'll never know type situation you know would, it, would you get it still be great you just never know what and, and definitely mikey is a great fighter but would you expect yes. he'll still be that same great fighter or did spence maybe take his his pound of flesh you know as they call it i mean there's two different situations it's definitely a possibility 100 percent. i mean at the end of the day uh you can react to it two different ways. He's a mentally strong person. So um, my guess is that he'll draw from the experience and say, I went to distance, draw positivity out of any part that he can. And then at the end of the day, know he went to distance and move forward and know 
okay, I was this was such a huge dude. I'm gonna go down to my weight class. I'm gonna whoop these dudes. I'm gonna school these guys. That's the way he should look at it. I feel like it's only you know right for him to look at it that way. I mean, he should pat himself on the back for taking the risk. That's a great you know thing. And I do believe there's victory in that. Just being the type of person to take a risk. You know, you take the loss, but you you won in the fact that you took the risk. Um, and at the end of the day, if he goes down there with that mentality, he can keep going and just be just as great as he was before. Um, I don't think he took the type of like damage that takes light, uh, life off his career as far as a physical standpoint. I'm just talking about mental as far as uh, can he be as dominant with the confidence level. But I think he will. The other way he could look at it is he could be like, oh, someone just dominated me on that level. Can that happen again? And have kind of flashbacks and like almost PTSD. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like he goes back and he's like, shoot, could this happen to me again? I doubt it, but it's possible. And it's really a, a toss up. You never know how someone's going to respond to it. He's he's figuring out what he's going to do. Right. Like as far as he's probably right now trying to decide how he's going to respond to it. You know, there's a lot of battling he's doing in his head. I guarantee it right now. You know, as a competitor who just took a loss, he's trying to figure out how he's going to bounce back as we speak i'm guessing so yeah and and yeah hopefully you know he can come back strong at 35 get a tune-up fight maybe and and we could get lomachenko after all maybe that'd be fantastic that'd be great so but man maybe i wanted back down. maybe he comes back down proves that he's great again against you know a, a still a good opponent proves he's great again gets some more confidence and then goes in the lomachenko fight you know definitely i mean that's still a fight people wanted to see for years yeah. so yeah. Exactly.